most people don't realize how much their iPads can actually do. In this video, I'm sharing five practical tips to help you get the most out of your iPad. Welcome to episode seven of From Beginner to iPad Pro. Have you ever opened your emails and seen something really important, but just didn't have the time to deal with it right there and then? In this tip, I'll show you two ways to set reminders for your emails. So let's first open up our email app. And then what you want to do is swipe left on the email that you want a reminder for. Here you can see remind me if we press that. You have the option to remind me in one hour, tonight, tomorrow, or remind me later. If you click on remind me later, this is where you can come in and set a time and date. So if I just set the reminder for in a few minutes, click on the time and then scroll up and we'll just put it for in one minute so you can see. And so it has up here today at 11.09, you will get a reminder. Okay, so now the reminder has been set off and you can see it's moved it up to the top of my inbox and it now says remind me. So you're only going to see this when you open up your emails. You're not going to get like a notification on your iPad or your iPhone like you do for other things. So this way can be pretty helpful, but if you actually need a notification reminder, we need to do this another way. The other way to remind yourself to come back to an email is to highlight the subject of the email. You can see here, the subject is right here. If we click and highlight it and then press this arrow to bring up share and we're going to go share. And then you want to swipe across until you see reminders. And then if you press reminders, you can choose if you have multiple lists in reminders, you can choose the list that you want it to go into. I just want it for my personal reminder. And then you can also click here and rename the title. And you can also click on the second line here and add a note. So if you need to add a note about what you actually need to do with this email, you can do that. And then if you hit this little eye icon over here, this is where you can set a time and date for the reminder. So if you want to be reminded tomorrow at 3 p.m., you would put that in and then you hit the tick. And so now you can see this is when the reminder is set for. And then you would just tick that. And you can also find that reminder if you go into your reminders app. So you can find that reminder in the reminders app. And you can also click the mail icon to open up the email app and take you directly to that email. You will get a reminder to your iPhone and your iPad with that notification at the time and date that you set. So if you really need that notification to remind you, I would do it this second way. But if you just want it to appear at the top of your inbox with a little remind me, you can do it the first way. If you've ever tried explaining to a friend or a family member how to do something on their iPad and they're just not getting it, Doing a screen recording with a voiceover can be really helpful. So to do a screen recording, you need to swipe down from the side of your screen to bring up the control center. And in here, you will have a screen recording button. And if you don't have the screen recording button, you can press and hold and come down to add a control. And in here, you wanna find the screen recording button. We can see it right here. It's the circle with the dot in the middle. We'll hit that and this is going to add it to the control center and I want to put mine down here. So I'm just going to drop and drag and I can make it bigger by gra grabbing that corner. And then we just press off of the screen. And if we swipe down now, I have the screen recording app. So to take a screen recording, all you need to do is press this button and it will start recording. But for this screen recording, we also want to do a voiceover so we can talk the people through the steps of whatever we're doing. So to turn on the microphone for the recording, you need to press and hold and then turn on the microphone here. So now the microphone's turned on, we can go start recording and click off of the screen. And you can see up the top here, we have a red recording button. So we're now recording the video. So now you can go into the settings on your iPad and show whatever you want to demonstrate. And then when you're finished recording, you just come up here and press the red button again, 
and go stop recording and you can click here to open your recording otherwise it will be in the photos app so if we click here we can see that recording that we have just done and you can hear the audio and to share that with somebody you just need to come up to the share icon and then you can airdrop it to them, message it to them. If it's a really long video, the file size is going to be a lot larger. So you might need to copy it to your iCloud and then send them a link. Uh, you can email it to them. So you have a lot of different options for sending the file to someone, but just remember the longer the video is, the bigger the file is. And the bigger the file is, the harder it can be to send. Try to keep the video as short as you can. But if it is a large video, I would suggest using like iCloud or something like that to send. But if it's a smaller one, you can send it via messages or WhatsApp or whatever message service you use. So let's say you're watching a YouTube video on your iPad and a QR code appears on the screen that you want to scan, but you only have your iPad and your phone's in the other room, so you can't take a photo of it. All you need to do is take a screenshot of the QR code by pressing the power button and the volume up button. So you will just want to pause the video when the QR code appears. I don't actually have any QR codes in my videos, so I can't show you exactly on this, but if I just open up any QR code, it's exactly the same. So pretend this is my YouTube video with the QR code and I've paused the video. We're going to take a screenshot with the power button and the volume up. And then it takes us into this screen and all you need to do is hit this live text button. And then it's going to highlight any of the text on the video or image and the QR code. So now we can just press on the QR code and it's going to open it up in your web browser. So if you use Safari, it will open it up in Safari. But for me, I use Arc browser. So if I click on this, it will take me to the website that was linked to the QR code. Most people don't realize you can change the default apps on your iPad. So links and emails open in the app that you actually want. So to do this, you need to go into your settings and then we want to scroll down all the way to the bottom to apps. And then up the top here, you can see default apps. We can change the default app for emails, messaging, calling, call filtering, your web browser, translation, passwords, and keyboard. So if we come up to email, you can see here we have the Apple Mail app, which everyone will have. But if you have installed other email apps like Gmail or Spark, or if you use Outlook, you can select that to be your default email app. You can also do this for your messaging app. So let's say you don't really use the built-in messages app and you always use WhatsApp. You can change it to that. Stuff for like a web browser. For me, I use Arc Search as my web browser. So yeah, if you prefer Google Chrome, you can change your default web browser to that. And another really good one is if you use a different password app. So if you're using the built-in Apple One passwords, that's fine, you don't need to change anything. But if you use another one, like I use Dashlane for my passwords, you can select that as your default password app. So when you're trying to log into like a website or something like that, it's going to prompt me with Dashlane to log in instead of the Apple Passwords app. It's a good idea to occasionally go through your iPad and delete apps you no longer use to keep things organized. In this tip, I'll show you the fastest way to do this. So let's swipe across to our app library. So you can see here, this is the app library and you can see it organizes all of our apps into folders so you can easily find them. But if you come up here and press on app library, this is going to put all your apps in a alphabetical order list. From here, you can scroll through this list and press and hold on any app that you wanna uninstall. So let's say we wanted to delete Canva, we can just press and hold and go delete app. So then you can just go through all of your apps in here and quickly delete anything that you don't want anymore. 
So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you found it useful. And if you did, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. And if you haven't watched all the other videos to this iPad tip series, I'll leave a link to the playlist below. And thank you for watching and I'll hopefully see you in the next video.